Good morning, everybody, and uh, welcome here to Kansas Speedway. We are now joined by Dale Earnhardt Jr., driver of the number 88 nationwide Chevrolet for Hendrick Motorsports. And uh, before we get into uh, today's media availability, I want to welcome up to the stage Kansas Speedway track president Pat Warren, who has a few cool surprises for us. Yeah, first, I apologize. We were supposed to have one of the nice big presentation decks. Didn't happen because our funding guy got hurt. Ironically, given that we got our medical director here. Uh, but in your honor, we're making a contribution of $8,800 to the University of Kansas Health System's Pediatric Unit. So Dennis, who hopefully you won't have to see anytime this weekend, uh, but manages the care clinic for us, uh, is here to represent that on behalf of Katie. So. Thank you very much. So yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. So second, this is just for me personally. As a father of four, I thought Dale was going to use this, so the expectant father. Good luck, light reading for you on the plane. So, and then we've got one more thing. If we can lower the screen, you probably, where do we want, where's the easiest place to watch it? You may just want to come down here. you develop as a race car driver. I remember being with your dad driving around the farm uh, in the winter of 97 and he told me that uh, he was going to put you in a bush car full time. And I asked him, you think he's ready for that? And Dale said, you're damn right he's ready for that. And of course you proved him right. You won the championship in 98 and then again in 99. And it took 12 whole races for you to win your first Winston Cup victory at Texas. It's been fun to watch that. It's been fun to watch you grow. It's been fun to watch you become two-time Daytona 500 champion. Uh, but more than anything, uh, I can flash back to that win in Texas. And yeah, it was great that you'd won, but what was so impressive to me was how proud your dad was that day. It's been a wonderful Experience sitting back and watching you accomplish what you've accomplished, but what you what you accomplished uh, is kind of hindsight to what you've become for me. You've become an outstanding person. You've become an outstanding man. Uh, it's just been a fantastic career. So I just wanted to take a few minutes to congratulate you on that. Uh, I know you and Amy are going to have a blast in your retirement. It's been fun. It's been fun watching you. It's been fun watching you compete. It's been fun watching you grow. So once again, congratulations on a tremendous career and a tremendous life. Good luck, Dale. So you may have noticed that uh, Ned Ghost is wearing the three. He wears that in honor of your father. Um, and the Royals wanted you to have jersey with your name on it, but Ned's number and your father's number, so uh, we'll get this framed for you and other things later, but uh, we wanted you to have that, and Ned had reached out to us and really wanted to do something, he couldn't be here today, but congratulations on a great career. Thanks so much. Thank you. Yes, sir. That's a lot of stuff there. Yeah, that's really emotional. Um, Ned's been Ned's been a great family friend and just so supportive of uh, me, and um, it's really nice to hear his memories and his thoughts. Um, and I appreciate the track for for the donation uh, within their community here. That means a lot to me. That's really what we we're, we're hoping the tracks would take the initiative to do and it's been great all year to see that happen and so I'm glad that you guys you guys did that and that really makes me makes my heart full um, so I, pr I appreciate that and I see a lot of fans here this weekend 
Signed a lot of autographs walking in here. We got a lot of people that are excited about this race, this race, and it's good to be able to connect with the fans at each racetrack throughout the throughout the weekend, and um, just really, uh, you know, just really appreciative. Just thank you so much uh, for for the effort to, to you know that you put in to to make me feel really special. So thanks a lot for that, and. Hopefully, uh, we keep coming here for many, many more years, and, and we'll continue to help the Speedway however we can. Uh, whatever you guys ever need, I'm just a, a text or a phone call away um, and, and, and excited and eager to help. So I uh, look forward to, to many more trips here and enjoying uh, the Speedway in the area, especially the barbecue. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> with that, we'll open the floor for questions. We'll start with Holly and we'll work our way around. Hi, Dale. Um, wanted to obviously ask you a little bit about your and Amy's big news that you're sharing with us. I have to tell you, at Dover, I remember you speaking quite a lot. And I said to myself and the person sitting next to me, I wonder if uh, something's going on there. So indeed it is. Congratulations. And if you could just talk about how special that is for you. And yeah, we've known since uh, September, and it's just been so, or actually since August, I guess. Um, oh, man, it's just uh, been really hard to keep that in and, and not share, wanting to share with family. And, and, and obviously, uh, you know, this is our family, all the folks here in this room, a lot of you guys are very close to me and um, mean a lot to me, all the people in the, in the garage. I mean, I just couldn't wait to, to tell everybody. And, and you know, I, I, I just, you know, certainly, you know, we have uh, a lot of checkups and, and we're, you know, we're, we're very thankful and looking forward to the whole process of, um, watching and and being involved and i mean i'm 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 just trying to be as supportive as i can to amy um making sure she feels well and and is comfortable and i'm just trying to soak in all the experiences of going to the doctor and and um listening to the heartbeat and all those little things that you do uh, they're incredible uh i um yeah i mean i have you know, it's just so, uh, I guess the thing that, you know, hits me is I've watched all my friends, a lot of them, uh, have kids. My sister have kids. And I was happy uh, for that, for those milestones in their lives, but I had no, un under I had no idea what that really meant. And, and as we start, you know, as we found out and we're going through these little, moments through the pregnancy it's just hitting home how um how impactful this you know that child has been in all the lives of my friends and family and i just really didn't understand or, or appreciate i guess how incredible that moment must have been for them and how their lives completely changed and i saw it from a completely different point of view when i wasn't experiencing it myself so um, I look at my friends completely different. I look at my sister completely different, you know, knowing what I know now and what I'm learning as I go. And I know that there's more to, to be exposed to and more enlightening and more, more eye-opening experiences that will make me not only appreciate what me and Amy are, we have, but what my friends and family and folks that I'm very close to have and what they've experienced. Because I, I thought I knew, you know, childbirth is exciting. It's awesome to have children and Everybody says it changes your life, and everybody says the greatest thing ever, but you just don't know till you really go through it, and I certainly have a, a new, I see, I look, you know, my buddy, uh, one of my friends, Sean Brawley, when he had his son a couple years ago, and he posts pictures of the boy all the time in our little text message, we have a bunch of friends in there, and I, I look at it completely different, I was like, you know, I don't, I understand he's excited, and I can't, but I can't really, like, I can't really understand that emotion, having not gone through it, and ha his pride in his son, and and just the little things they do, the first, the many firsts that they have, and I get it now. 
I mean, I, I'm, I, I understand where that pride comes from, where that excitement comes from, where that wanting to share those moments comes from. And, and I, I, I hate that I didn't appreciate it as much, but you just don't till you know, you know, till you go through it. So that's something that's really eye opening. Um, but I'm thrilled to, you know, I'm thrilled to be in this position in my life. Uh, I know that Amy's uh, changed my life a lot, and, and, and I imagine this baby's going to have the same impact. And just can't wait to meet her. I'm just thrilled to meet her. I'm, and I, it's just taking forever. <laughs> we'll go next to Lee, then to Bob, then to Jerry. And here we thought you were just giddy to drive that two car around the track <laughs> last week. And, um, I was talking to, to Greg yesterday after qualifying. He was saying how sensitive this track is and that it, it, just an inch moving your line can make all the difference in the world. Then you throw in the factor in the wind. Um, can you, for people who don't understand that, can you explain how critical every spot on this racetrack is? Yeah, every, every track you go to, the wind is really un important to take note of initially before you go out on the track so you can understand how that's going to affect the car and what you're feeling, pa especially at a place like Kansas when it's blowing 15, 20 miles an hour on some days. So if you have wind on the nose going down the back straightaway, but all, but it's in your back going into the turn one, I mean, the car is just going to have a different balance on each end of the track. And so you got to think about what you're working on, what you're trying to fix, what, to, what part of it's the wind and what part of it's not. The wind has a habit of changing uh, 180 from one day to the next, you know. Are you going to be, you know, is this, is, is a, you know, if you've got a lot of air on the nose getting into turn three, the car's just going to drive down in there really good. You're going to feel so much downforce and side force as you enter that corner. You're going to have the co complete opposite feeling into turn one. If the wind, sh you know, if you're working on that, on those balance issues, on Saturday, and then the wind changes. You know, you sort of got you, you wasted your time, or you got your hands full with this, with new issues. So you just gotta, you, you know, you gotta watch the the wind prediction. It's really critical at some of these places like Kansas, where it's quite quite high on the gusts and stuff. Um, and the track is line sensitive, but but not, you know, I think I love that you can move to the wall. I mean, we. As a driver, we love having so many options in the corner, and this place just gives you everything. You know, this place just opens itself up to whatever you want to try. It's a perfect scenario as far as multiple grooves, and um, you know, it's not just fast at the top uh, as the track builds rubber. The middle stays really relatively competitive, and so it's not like you just only have one, you know, it's not like you run on the bottom all weekend and then the, then the everybody moves to the top at some point and that's it. You know, you, the track really stays competitive all the way across the, the, the board. And it's, you know, it's just been, it was a great track before they reconfigured it. It's still a great track. And the, I think the, the asphalt they used, how it's aged, um, how well it's held up to, to bumps and so forth. I mean, we don't, you know, we have a tunnel in three and four. There's no bump there. There's no frustrating issue like, you know, you have a lot of tracks with bumps and the tunnels and stuff. This place is just built so well, and it's really just widened out. It's such a fun racetrack. So really look forward to coming here and racing here. Um, but the wind is a is a bit of a, you know, it's a bit of a curveball that you don't deal with at most of the racetracks or, or some of the racetracks. It's pretty windy out here. Um, so you just got to think about that and what that's doing to the car and do you are you going to have that same wind same wind direction on race day is it going to be less you're going to be different direction uh, how's that going to affect the balance of the car and what do you need to do to work on that go next to bob then to jerry Hi, bob parker cspn when you look back on your career and your life and just all the ups and downs in the public eye do you feel charm do you feel like it's been a bizarre life do you, is it <laughs> I would say most people say it's far from normal, but how yeah. do you how do you view it? Um, l lucky, so fortunate. Just you know, um, no, you know, it's it, a lot of times you don't feel like you deserve some of the, you know, the fortune. You know, just the chance. The you know, being born uh, to the to Dale Earnhardt Sr. I mean, that's 
he was a hell of a guy. And aside from just the doors that had opened up to me as a driver, and you know, it, it certainly made my progression easier. Um, just being able to be around him and learn from him and feed off of that knowledge and and his 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 way of approaching things uh, was such a good fortune. I think I'm thankful for that all the time. And uh, yeah, I mean, it just seems like uh, you know we got we had so many. I don't know if they're lucky breaks or just being in the right place at the right time. A lot of the association of my dad was a big part of it. I mean, we we got lined up with Bud Riser right out of the gate into the, into the Cup Series, shot us into the stratosphere as far as our name recognition and uh, building our brand. I had no idea what all that was then, but it certainly uh, has paid. It's still paying off today, and and um, the things we did with Budweiser early out of the gate, uh, the Rolling Stone article, Cribs, TV, Cribs on MTV, and all those things that they opened the door to pay off today, still reaping the benefits of all that opportunity. And um, yeah, I mean, you know, you've been, been able to go do things and, and talk to people and meet people and mingle with folks that you never thought you'd have a chance to, to talk to or, or engage with. Um, and then you, then you just think about the racing, you know, the success. I didn't think I was going to win any races. I didn't think I was ever going to be a cup driver. When I was a kid, before I started racing in Xfinity Series, I thought that I was never going to get a chance. And then if I did, I wasn't going to run well enough to maintain, you know, maintain that opportunity and, and keep progressing. I just didn't look at myself with a lot of confidence or, or uh, I, wasn't, I didn't think, you know, man, I'm a great driver. Boy, just give me a shot, you know. From what I could tell, I didn't know whether I was a good driver or not. And um, so I just didn't know, you know, how things were going to work out. So on the racing side, it's been, I know that, you know, there's, there's people that look at our statistics and there's, they're, they're underwhelmed because there was so much expectation coming in. Um, you know that there was there that was almost it was maybe you know people felt it might be a given that we would have won a championship in our career at some point on the at the cup level. But it, when I look at the accomplishments, I know I'm disappointed we didn't win a championship. But I never thought I'd even get close. I never thought I'd ever win a Daytona 500. I never thought we'd win. You know, sweet Bristol. I mean, all the little things. I, you know, any. I just never thought any of that stuff was going to happen or be possible. So when I look at my career, you know, it just blows me away that we were able to do what we did. And I was able to do it uh, with the people I was with and driving for Rick now. I mean, all the, I, never, I, didn't, I looked at Rick Hendrick and all that stuff back when I was at DEI. I thought they were here, you know, they were the best. And, and I'd never get a shot to work with a team like that. I, I, I had a lot of. You know, I had a strong connection, family connection to DEI, but I never put ourselves on the same pedestal as I did Hendrick Motorsports, and I don't think anybody in the sport really did. Um, at certain episodes through the 90s and 2000s. But, um, so I never thought I'd have an opportunity to race for a team like that. One of the best in the business. So just, it's, uh, it has been odd and, 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 and unexpected for sure. Um, but I feel uh, I feel fortunate and just so and I hate to use the word blessed because everybody uses that word a lot. But I just feel lucky as hell, you know. I just didn't, I, it, I did, you know, to not have screwed it up somewhere along the line. You know, I wasn't always, uh, you know, we raised hell and partied and and you know in the early 2000s, Budweiser, all that stuff. It sort of was, you know, they wanted me to just raise hell and drink beer and. It's a wonder what we could have accomplished if we'd have just focused on racing. <laughs> but I'm pretty happy with it, to be honest with you. I had a lot of fun, won a lot of races. Go next to Jerry, then to Dustin, then to Brent. Jerry Jordan, Kicking the Tires.net and Performance Racing Network. Um, you wanted a girl 
over, over a boy. Yeah. And uh, as a father of a girl, it's going to go by really quick. But there's a question I don't have. Don't feel like it. <laughs> it's it's going to happen. But ballet or bandoleros, have you even given that a thought no, yet? No, <laughs> no. Man, I, I, I know I'm just uh, praying for health, you know, and I know that's that's a given. But, you know, y'all been in, you know, the few of you in here that have been in this situation before, during the pregnancy, you're just like, you know, just be healthy and, and, and have all your little fingers and toes. And um, once you get beyond that, I think you start thinking and daydreaming a little bit. But uh, we'll, we'll get to that point after we have a, a healthy baby in our arms. Um, I can't even imagine, you know, hold, holding my child. So I'm just looking. I'm just, I can't think beyond that, you know. Dustin? Dustin Long, NBC Sports. What was it like to hear the heartbeat? <laughs> oh, I got a I got a little film of it on my phone and we just busted out laughing. It was great. I mean it put a it made it you know, it made it more real. It was uh we pinching ourselves even still, you know, we have to we look at each other and we're sitting on a couch or walking around the house or something and just have to like remind ourselves that we're in this we're going through this position you know this pregnancy and we're we just can't believe um we're so you know we just can't believe it so um anytime you hear the heartbeat or do something like that or you know go do an ultrasound or something like that it makes it it re you know it's like hey it's happening this is happening you get a little scared you get excited you know um but that was uh we were sitting at, we went to the we went for a checkup Amy's like, you know, she took a couple tests and, and she's, you know, tests saying she's pregnant. We went to the doctor and I'm still thinking, man, I ain't believing crap till the doctor tells me. So we're sitting in there for like 20 minutes and they're talking, you know, woman language. I'm not understanding. <laughs> they're talking, they're just talking about things. And I'm like, well, when are we going to, when's she going to say it? Like, I want to hear it from the doctor's mouth <laughs> that she's pregnant so we can rejoice. And so... You know, it took it. It took a while. I was scared to speak up. I just like was like, finally, she. They started. They said something that hit hit. You know, that that confirmed it for me. And I was like, awesome. And then we had the ultrasound and got to hear the heartbeat and all that right there. It was great. So we go back for another checkup here soon and and uh, a couple of days and. Those are awesome. Those are so much fun because you get to. It's like closest you can get to it. Uh, before they're born, so looking forward to each and every one of them. <laughs> yeah, it's sort of a, uh, it's like a, I don't know, not like, uh, not like a funny ha-ha laugh, more like you just, something just comes out, you know, just, you just, uh, I'd play it for you. Um <laughs> You just burst out like joy, you know. I don't know. It's not. It wasn't funny, haha. -ha, but it was just like, you know, a joy, joyful moment. Like I mean, you know, you. Somebody says, you know, your your wife's pregnant. You know that 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 don't. I mean, that registers a little bit. But man, when you hear that heartbeat, it's like, yep. It's real, you know. This is a real thing in there, and it's it's here, you know. This is oh my god, this is happening. So, just all this emotion just pops out, huh? Sure. Okay. <laughs> Amy might be upset about this. <laughs> if y'all, it just take me a second to find it. We have a little photo stream called the blueberry. Because that's what it initially was the size of a blueberry when. <laughs> so it's probably going to be service wise. I only have one bar of LTE. <laughs> so I don't think we're going to be able to listen to it. But. Okay. Yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll move on here. And we'll go to Brent. We'll go to Tyler. And then we'll finish with Pat. Brent Lamb, Speedway. Oh, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> 
Brett Langham, SpeedwayDigest.com. I think you touched on it earlier, but what is it about this track in the surrounding Kansas City area that stands out from the other places that you go to, and what is it about the Kansas City area that you admire the most? Well, I, I mean, obviously, I love barbecue and learning about um, smoking barbecue and all that stuff, and this is like the capital of the, the world, you know, the country. I'm sure there's some people in other parts of the country to debate that, but um, for me, this is this is some amazing places to go eat. Uh, barbecue and if you're if it's a hobby of yours that that's that's kind of cool um so also one of the things you know we started cycling this year and we go about two miles from the track to this lake right over here and there's a 6.8 mile loop on it it's dedicated it's pretty pretty nice and there's a park and um i would have never cared about this five ten years ago but um as we go to some of these racetracks uh, so getting out of here and cycling, you see the area that you don't take the opportunity to see, and so it's really beautiful. The uh, when we're not when we didn't last time we were here, I took Amy and the dogs over to that park during the Xfinity race and just sitting there and and you know just taking it easy. It's the kind of thing that you learn to appreciate, I guess, about certain parts of the country and this Kansas. I mean, this area is just so cool. The track itself, you know, like I said, it's just a fun race track. You can run all over it, and and it, it's uh, it's a place where you're kind of not, you're not cornered to run. You're not you're not just limited to running one groove, like at an Indy, Indy or somewhere like that, where there's one way through the corner and that's it. Make your car work or it don't work. Here you can move around, change how your car drives, and it and the track really widens out, really nice. It's so awesome. So. Um, yeah, I mean, it's just a, it's a great, it's a great trip, man. It's fun to come here. Never, some tracks you got nothing to do, nowhere to go. You sit in a bus and just, you know, go bonkers. But here you can get out and enjoy, and it's a great, it's a great part of the country. Tyler? Tyler Jones, Cal W. and Lawrence. Dale, uh, as you near the end of your career here, these uh, last few races, how is it that you personally want to be remembered? What do you want your legacy to be? Uh, Going, going down the road. Yeah, I just hope people enjoyed me, uh, enjoyed being around me. I hope my competitors thought I was a good driver. Um, hope they admired my skill and ability, uh, and that I raced them uh, as a fresh, you know, professional or gentleman. Um, but I hope that the, you know, it's important to me that all the guys in the garage, all the crew guys, and everybody, I have so much respect for them, and I hope that they have the same amount of respect for me, and. Um, I feel the same way about the media. You know, er, anybody who travels week to week to week and is here in this whole thing, whether you whether you're an official or Mike Helton or a mechanic on a on a on a you know Dylan's car. I don't. You know, I want. I have. You know, we all have to. You know, we all have so much respect for each other for the the the, the travel and the the work and effort goes into being here. And and I I hope that they have the same amount of respect for me. Um, yeah, you know, that's all that matters, I guess, is uh, that people think you're a good person and fun to be around. And, you know, when, uh, you know, the wins and all the successes are great, but, it's, you know, at the end of the day, it's kind of about who you are and whether you're a you're good dude. And, um, you know, people people tend to remember whether you were nice or not. <laughs> and uh, no matter how many races you win or lose, it really comes down to whether you were all right and uh, or not very good. And so it's fun, you know. So I hope people you know, enjoyed being around me and enjoyed being, having me uh, as a part of the sport. And I want to continue that. I mean, you know, I'm going to try to do really well with the broadcasting, and, and I want to continue to um, – earn respect and and I want people to I want the people that work in this industry what no matter what their job is to appreciate me being a part of it you know so I'm going to work really hard um, on on the next chapter to continue to try to be an asset helpful thoughtful um, caring and um, continue to try to grow the sport and you know try to keep those things at, at the forefront of the priorities in my in my career, my professional career. Okay. Uh, Pat DeCool and NASCAR.com. 
with parenthood, you quickly learn that you get a whole lot of unsolicited advice. Yeah. Has that started for you yet? And sure. So what's the best thing you've learned? Well, I don't know whether I've really been able to apply any of it yet to know what the best part is, but or the best information is. Everybody says, obviously, try to get your sleep now because the first uh, several months are very difficult, but we can't. You know, we're laying in bed, just can't sleep. We're so excited. I'm, I kind of want to get some sleep now, <laughs> but we just lay in bed, just tossing and turning all night, both of us. And um, you know, I don't know. I, I I don't know that it's just like I don't know that you can. You know, we you, you can read books and and uh, there I got an app on my phone and trying to get as much information as I can to understand how to make Amy comfortable as I can. And um, it's very helpful, you know. A lot, I, I think some of the most helpful advice for me is probably what, I, what, what can I do to make it easier for Amy? Um, and these, you know, the, the advice that I've gotten is she don't, get, she don't care what you did that day. She don't care how your day was, <laughs> so don't try to tell her. <laughs> um, you know, if you had a rough day or whatever, just shelf it. And, you know, try to keep on being an assistant, you know, to, to whatever she needs at all times. And, and that's pretty easy to remember because, you know, I feel that way already, you know, about her. So um, I'm, she actually has to kind of tell me to back off because I'm so like, what can I do? What, can, what do you need? What, what Can I get you something? So, um, but it's awesome. I mean, somebody said the other day that, you know, you thought you were in love with your wife. You're just going to love her more and it, it, with this child coming into your lives, and it's so true. I mean, um, I, I, uh, I don't, I, you know, just like marriage, I don't, I'm, I'm frustrated with myself for waiting so long, you know, in my life to get things figured out. Well, Dale, appreciate you taking the time. Good luck, not only in the race this weekend, but in the adventure to come. Oh, thank you.